Hello, YouTube world. This is an exciting time of year here on the West Coast. It's spring here in California. And as soon as I see some kind of morale posting on Facebook, on Mushroom Observer, or elsewhere on the World Wide Web, I hop in my car and I drive straight up to the snow line of the Sierra Nevadas, checking for temperatures, elevations, and where to hunt morels. Also, disturbances, fresh cutly woods, um, for vlogging efforts, and fire zones. So today I'm going to talk to you about the five fundamental ways to hunt for morels. So let's go ahead and get into it. These morels are delicious as they are interesting looking. They are meaty, you wanna cook them, and I could talk about cooking them in another video. But many of you are out there going, how do I find morels? The number one way to find morels is timing. You have to have the right timing. Here on the West Coast, they fruit in the spring as the, wet, the East Coast. So what we're waiting for is the snows to melt and the spring to start. And timing also goes along with when you go up there to the spots you'd known before, or you go with a friend who is taking you or a group, or you're just checking out based on a GPS location or an elevation or a general location, you may be too early, you may be too late. So timing is really of the essence when you go morale hunting. So making more than one effort so you don't get skunked or bageled is really, really important. Um, you wanna watch the weather. You wanna watch for rain patterns and snow patterns. This season in California, we recently got a couple of inches of heavy um, spring snow that quickly melted. When that sun comes up and warms up the soil and that snow then becomes water on the ground and seeps in, you can get a huge activity of morale flourish um, fruitings, which is what you want. It's been a divine year here in 2022 on the, um, in the Sierras here, Sierra foothills. So you want to go often and um, you want to um, go with friends because it's better in a group, but uh, you want to check out um, many elevations as well. So along the coastline, they fruit anywhere between 400 to 1200 feet. And then when you get up into the Sierras, they can start fruiting around 2000 feet and then that will dry up. And then so you just go higher in elevation, you go up to 3000 feet, 4000 feet, and you just keep going up, up the mountain roads, mountain passes, logging roads, old dirt roads, um, trying to find more and more morels. So timing is of the essence. And what we're looking for here, let me digress for just a minute, is this is the Morcella elata clade, which now we know through DNA analysis is actually a group of at least seven species. A few years ago, we thought we had about 10 species of morels in California, and now we know we actually have a lot more, and we need more research to be able to really, you know, decipher all the nomenclature uh, for all the different morels. And that's also another subject. So let's go back to how to find morels. Number two, you wanna drive around and look for indicator species of plants and fungi. Often when you see little orange cup morels, and I'll send, put pictures and, and species here, but when you see other cup morels or false morels, you know that the uh, morchella what we're looking for is going to be also fruiting at the same time. You just have to find the right spot where they're, you know, where they're coming out of the ground, where you can find the fruiting bodies. So other things you want to look for is the snow plant, which is an achlorophyllous plant. It's completely red. It's um, Sarcudes uh, sanguinea. And when you see that popping out of the ground, you know the morels are also popping out of the ground. You also want to look for the blooming western redbud tree, which is a beautiful purple flower that comes out in the springtime. Another tree in bloom to look for is the white California dogwood. When the dogwood is in bloom, you know the morels are also fruiting. Um, the forest should start to be coming alive with plant species, the trilliums, the lilies, and these other flowering trees. 
you will see, and there's an indication that there's probably morels fruiting nearby. So look for your indicator signs of plants and fungi when you're hiking around, walking around, and looking for places to go hunting. You also want to know your trees. So, you know, morels can grow under a lot of different species of hardwoods, particularly on the East Coast. They're not known to be under one specific tree or another. Here on the West Coast, they really like our conifer forests. So these are forests rich with fir trees, uh, Jefferson pine, ponderosa pine. They also are found under oaks, apple trees, and a variety of other tree species. But mainly here in the Sierra Nevadas, you're going to find them in association with our conifers, which would be the firs, the ponderosa pine, and the Jeffrey pine, and those forests rich with those trees. So number four, you wanna know where to go. And what I mean by that, with elevation being key to the moisture in the soil, you also wanna go look on eastern, excuse me, first south facing slopes in the early spring. And then as the, the season warms up, as you go into May and June and July, you wanna to go to the northeastern facing slopes that will stay darker, cooler and moister for longer periods of time. You want to look for soil disturbances made by humans. So go to campgrounds, look for um, horseshoe pits, fire pits, um, campsites where there's picnic tables, um, actually around toilets. Eee. I actually find them around toilets kind of often because people are always walking in that area. The sides of roads where uh, the forestry service is cut into the, the road to go into logging zones, often where the, the big backhoes make big, huge piles of soil on the hillside is where you find morels. And then also in the burns, often where the roots have burned out and they make holes, kind of in the shallow area, you'll find moisture and you'll often find morels there as well. So along soil disturbances by humans in the pathways of these fire zones where the fire team has come in and cut roads through. And then also you want to try to channel your area with that elevation, with that human disturbance, also around um, moist areas, which would be where you're going to find creeks and um, streams. So that'll stay moist longer in the season as well. So you want to know where to go, not just general sierras but also a little more specific with the the terroir to be precise um and you want to know what to do when you find a morel so you want to bring a bag and you want to bring a knife and i should have brought some here for you to see but i can put a little picture here for you to see so um hunting knives they don't have to be sharp but just any pocket knife will do. And you definitely don't want to hunt with a plastic bag. I use um, actually the cloth grocery bags. A lot of people say use the, the netted bags so that the spores that are coming off of the, the fungi you collect will spill and, and spread their seed around the forest, which is always a good idea um, to proliferate. I always say leave the babies behind and leave the old uh, funky uh, rotting morels behind. This is the same for all mushroom hunting. That way someone else ca can have a chance to get the, the freshies in a week or two and then the old ones will be there to proliferate the species in that region. So also um, I say put on your mushroom eyes. So you want to really take a look at the soil surface and pay attention to all the little details. So the fir cones you see, the rocks, the gravel, the bark, the burn, the other fungi you may see. If you're noticing every little detail, you can't miss a morel, and that is true. And when you, when you actually harvest, you want to cut at the base of the morel. So the morel will be in the soil surface, and you wanna actually just take your knife and just cut it right at the soil surface, and that will leave the sclerotium, which is like a little potato underground that it fruits out of, in the ground to not disturb that. And what that also does is it leaves the dirt in the forest and doesn't collect dirt in your bag. 
and collecting dirt in your bag by the time you get home means that all these little nooks and crannies will be coated with dirt and gross. So you definitely don't want that. So try to keep the cut, whoops, keep cutting them at the surface to leave that sclerotium in the soil, undisturb that soil, and then also leave that soil in the forest floor so you don't have to clean all that stuff out later. So some um, other references you may want to know about in terms of hunting fungi, identifying fungi, and sharing your information. You may want to keep some stuff secret, but I do like to share my location. I don't give GPS location, but general information about the soil type, the soil temperature, the, or at least a moisture reading and um, a general elevation. I keep my altimeter on everywhere I go when I'm going morel hunting. And you can share these on thegreatmorel.com with the morel sightings page. Mushroomobserver.org is always a great place to put your findings, no matter morel or whatever mushrooms you're looking for. And then there's lots of mycology groups on Face World and on social media. And then you can also join your local mycology chapter. I highly recommend uh, going and talking to other people, going out into groups and, um, and having a great time. So if you have any questions, leave them below and I will let you know the answer if I can. And thank you so much for joining me again for another chat about mycology. All right, you fun guys and gals, enjoy the day.